short stories and novels. That if that is the old media, or, or one of the older media at this point, there's a very particular uh, amount of control that you have when what you're working with is text on a page, no voice, and no interactive, right? Mm -hmm. And it's you and the reader, and the reader, of course, brings in their experience, so you don't have perfect control over that thing on the page, but you're really only managing on, I don't know, Corey, how would you say it, sort of on, on, on two, um, two, two planes? Two, two axes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, could everybody here who began that way tell a little story or give a little example of the next thing that, not necessarily historically happened, but that's interesting to them. I mean, Neil, for instance, you've written a lot for, for film and theater. That takes away from you and adds an extra access or an extra bit of control. Um, uh, Corey, uh, you've done interactive, people have done um, voice reading, um, podcasts either by themselves or by um, by other people. I just want to kind of layer in the new media and talk about how it's grown out and how it's affected our art from the basic words on a page. I, I, I honestly don't think it has. I just think they're different disciplines. Um, the, 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 they're all, I, mean, I, I love all the different disciplines, but I'm always very aware that they're different disciplines. Um, prose is an astonishingly clean sort of thing to do, but what you're actually doing in prose is kind of the equivalent of giving the reader the raw code and telling them to compile the program themselves. Um, they, they, you're breaking everything down to, in, in the English language, at least 26 letters and, and groups thereof, and you hand them those things and they build the world up from them. Um, which is a completely different skill set to trying to write a comic, which is a different skill set to writing a radio play. I mean, I, I love radio plays, and I'm thrilled that one of the things that new media has actually given us is the return of the radio play, the return of the audio book. Uh, audio books in 2001, um, I was talking to um, the, the head of the audio department of Harper Collins, who was basically telling me that they were expecting to close down very soon because nobody was buying cassettes anymore. The economics did not work for bringing out 20 CD. The, 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 it was packaging rather than and production costs were such that bringing out these things where a novel is on 10 or 20 CDs just didn't work. And this whole thing was kind of doomed. Um, they were they were done, and now Audible.com is just on a, on a graph that's going like that. Okay, but for you as a writer, then your stuff gets picked up for audiobook. What happens? It, it gets picked up for audiobooks. Well, in, in my case, I just go and record it. So uh, you're yeah, reading it yourself. I, I read it myself, right. and, unless it's. I mean, I didn't do a Nancy Boys because I figure anything with four different little old Jamaican ladies in it is something <laughs> that I'm not going to record. <laughs> <laughs> I, that could be Lenny Henry's problem, and it was. But normally, I just, uh, the, with the audio, I do my own stuff. I, I use exactly the same techniques I use when telling a bedtime story to one of my kids, the same way I tell a story forever. Um, what the new media has changed is simply access to that. It, it's the... It, it's really weird, now I'll say this and then it turns out this, that somebody else says that, so not just my colleague, but one of the things that's absolutely fascinating me recently investigating audiobooks, I'm doing a piece for NPR on the fall and rise of the audiobook, and talking to the old-timer audiobook people, and they're telling me, well, of course, the, the, the great tragedy is that we don't have any of the great reading their stuff. Mm -hmm. Because the way the media worked, the most you could ever hope for was was a sort of three sided LP three sides of LP. That was the longest anybody ever did of anything. So you know, Catman Press, who did audio recordings, have wonderful thirty two minutes of you know, 32 Dylan minutes Thomas of Steinbeck, 32 yeah. minutes of Dylan Thomas, 32 okay. minutes of Dylan Thomas. And now, of course, we have no limits. The idea that 
we can get anybody to do anything of any length because it's simply information. And okay. Anybody else? I'd actually like to pick up on something Neil said about.